Right. Um, and again, like I said, the um, the first talk, the last talk, was just an introduction to the project, and starting today, we're actually thinking about building this machine and how do we do it technically. And the whole idea is, if you manage to get to the end of the presentation, you will be able to see in your mind a path from a concrete path from where we are now to an operational machine that meets the requirements, that meets the goals that were outlined in the first part. Okay, uh, in particular, of course, the machine should be maximally safe, maximally benevolent, and maximally trustworthy. I know it might sound impossible, it might sound crazy, because we're just talking about a computer here. How do you achieve that? But it's just done in many, 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 many levels. Okay, you just start with the hardware, you add many, 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 many levels until you get that, uh, that level of behavior. Okay, so the next hundred, uh, 700 AGIs, right. Um, there's this chap called Seth Baum, uh, Seth Baum, and I've forgotten which organization he's with. Uh, um, Global Catastrophic Risk Institute, I think. Um, he did a survey recently of AGI projects, and there are about 45 apparently and I've asked him to include us in his next survey um, now if you imagine the space of all possible AGI design so all possible ways you might build an intelligent machine and there's probably thousands of them um, uh, even an infinite number um, only some of which will be technically viable okay and in particular only some of which will be safe benevolent and trustworthy um, so when you are designing an AGI you have to make a number of design choices and um, so it, you know if you one particular design choice and you've got three choices that that essentially um, partitions the space of all possible AGI designs so there's AGI designs the way you made that choice down there and then AGI designs where you made that choice there and AGI designs where you made that choice there so um, I'm just gonna talk now about a couple of the design choices major design choices that I um, made um, one of the key design choices is um, what knowledge do you actually build into the machine do you hard code into the machine and what do you um, ex uh, you know what what is learned by the machine so for example there are some AGI designs like reinforcement learning where basically everything is learned by the machine they just build this learning engine and hope to switch it on and hope for the machine to learn absolutely everything from scratch and nothing is hard coded. Um, the same could be said maybe of the whole brain emulation uh, approach um, uh, where you know the idea is you have a big computer that emulates 100 billion neurons or something um, and uh, um, you know if it's similar to the human brain then it will learn similarly um, and uh, it will learn everything. So no, again, in that instance, no, no knowledge uh, about anything is hard coded into the machine. Now, um, this design, the Big Mother design, uh, is deliberately split into uh, two levels of cognition. There's an inner cognition where the universe of discourse is all of mathematics. So it's not interfacing with the real world. When the inner cognition looks out at the world, all it sees is mathematics, but it, it's essentially uh, clever enough to uh, be able to, um, the universe of discourse can represent essentially any, all of current day mathematics. It's basically set theory on which all of mathematics is based. And the, it only has two cognitive processes, 
deduction and abduction. So there's, there's no learning cognitive process here. Um, so, oh, <laughs> it's not quite true. So there's no induction. Um, so most of the knowledge, because the universe of discourse is math, so most of the knowledge is hard coded during the design process will be um, encoding the knowledge that we need and we'll be talking about that later on. Some level of, uh, some knowledge about mathematical objects will be learned um, and I'll be describing that later, actually quite a bit later, because that's a speed up, that's a speed up mechanism. So the outer cognition um, is basically built on top of the inner cognition and the universe of discourse is the entire physical universe. So when that level of machine looks out at its universe, it basically sees everything we see, okay? And uh, there is a primary cognitive process which is called induction um, and all knowledge, all belief about the physical universe is learned by the machine, okay? So there's those two levels of cognition the inner cognition is, you know, it's just deductive, it's just mathematical, and it essentially grounds the machine logically. And this is a big part of making the machine safe, okay? And then the outer cognition is built on top of that, and that's where it's looking at, it's, that's where you connect the inner cognition to the physical universe. And once you're looking at the physical universe, everything's uncertain, everything's a guess, okay? Um, but rather than hard code belief about the physical universe, the machine will learn essentially everything from bare metal about the universe. Because anything we might tell it is wrong because anything we think we know is actually a guess. <laughs> okay, Every, everybody's belief system is different and subjective. You know, so we might think we know what cats are, but actually, other people have different, uh, different belief. You know, cats is a slightly different concept. So basically, the machine, uh, the outer cognition, will um, learn everything. Uh, we all, all we do is we build this mechanism for observing the universe and synthesizing beliefs from it. Written the saying about model is not more or less accurate; it's more or less useful. I've probably it's said that stuff a bit. I think. So it will depend what direction your AGI is coming from as to what kind of models it builds. You know, there isn't a right or a wrong model other than the context. You see what I mean? Um, well, there is such a thing, uh, if you look at the problem of induction, there is, there is something called weak induction where you can synthesize beliefs which are not, which are not justified by evidence. And then there's strong induction where you synthesize beliefs which are in fact justified by evidence. So what we want to achieve, of course, is strong induction. So when it synthesizes a belief, it does actually have genuine justification for doing so. But just like any entity, um, when it looks out at the world, at the universe, and um, collects percepts, it will have a percept history, which is its history of observation of the world. It's always going to be finite, and it's always going to be different from anybody else's percept history. Everybody's experience of the world is different, okay? And that's the information that they use to, to synthesize their beliefs from, okay? The most important thing is to make sure that when it synthesizes beliefs, it's done so on the basis of strong induction. Okay, so the beliefs, you can actually have confidence in them relative to its percept history. So, again, this is something we were talking about a, sec a second ago. Another key design decision is to what extent do you base the machine architecture on, for example, the human archetype as opposed to trying to just think mathematically about what intelligence is. Um, now, there's um, a veteran AI researcher called Patrick Henry Winston, 
and he loves to point out that um, if you read any neuroscience textbook, the most uh, the most common thing you will see expressed is we don't know how this bit works yet. Um, so really, for a start, we, we really don't know enough about how the brain works to be able to reverse engineer one uh, in truth. And uh, you know, we have some partial ideas, but we're not at the point yet where we're able to reverse engineer um, um, human intelligence, human level intelligence from uh, by studying the brain. However, even if we did, this is what I was saying earlier on and what I said in the introduction, human cognition is seriously flawed relative to the logical mathematical ideal, right? Now, um, it's easy to think that, you know, humans are the most intelligent species on earth and they're, they're the most intelligent ex example that we have of intelligence. That doesn't necessarily mean that they are as, you know, you, that you can't improve on that. And in fact, once you start studying um, intelligence from the logical mathematical perspective, it, it is immediately obvious that humans are flawed along these various dimensions. Um, so, <laughs> why if human cognition is flawed why reproduce that flaw those flaws in an agi do you see um so for that reason i've decided to take the logical mathematical approach and sometimes this is called machine intelligence rather than artificial intelligence artificial intelligence kind of suggests that you're starting with some archetype typically humans and trying to construct an artificial version of it but machine intelligence suggests that you are just studying intelligence as a concept in its own right starting from a blank piece of paper and that's more the approach that I've taken